Okay, the next problem is going to be the sum from n is equal to 5 to infinity of 1 over n to the 1.0001. That is my series. And we're going to be using the p-series quite a bit uh, in this section, so I'm going to write that down over here. The p-series, for reference, uh, is basically when the sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p. Okay, and it converges, it converges for p greater than 1, and it diverges for p less than or equal to 1. That's important, so I'm going to keep it up there, you know, for this section. Okay, all right, so what do we have here? It looks like we have a p series, 1 over n to a power, okay? But the only thing is, and you'd be tempted just to say that it's equal, but uh, the only difference here is that, look, n starts from 5 to infinity. It doesn't start from 1 to infinity, so you're not really quite sure. Does it apply? Does it make sense? Is it exactly valid to say this? Okay, well, you can say that if it were a p-series, if it were governed by this, since, uh, since p is greater than 1, this thing's going to diverge. That's something, I'm sorry, it's going to converge. It's, that's what it's going to do. You can see that by inspection because it's greater than 1. Okay, the question is, does it matter if you start from 5, okay? Let me do a little thought experiment with you, okay? What you're doing is an infinite sum of things. What you're trying to do is find out if that infinite sum converges to a number or not, okay? The fact that this one starts at 1, I mean, starts at 5 rather than starting at 1, okay? It doesn't really matter is the short answer of it, okay? When you're it matters if you were trying to actually calculate the sum of the series. Obviously, the sum of the series when you start from n is equal to 5 is going to be different than if you had started from n is equal to 1. So the sum, the actual number that you're adding up and, 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 and actually arrive at is different in those cases. But to actually see if it converges or not, it really doesn't matter. Because if, if it did start at 1, let's say it did start at 1, uh, to infinity, then you would have uh, you would have several extra terms here at the beginning. N is equal to one. N is equal to two. N is equal to three. N is equal to four. You would have those four terms at the beginning of the sum, but then you would be continuing on with n is equal to five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on and so on. So the first four terms that you're adding to the front are just going to end up being an additive constant. They're a fixed number, okay? And whether or not the thing converges or not is not going to depend on the first five, uh, four terms. It's going to depend on how the thing approaches as you go off to infinity. So for practical purposes to boil it all down, yes, you need to be cognizant when it says something other than n is equal to 1 down here when you're doing your, your comparison to the series. And yes, it would definitely impact the actual sum you would get uh, if it started at 1 or started at 5. But when you're talking about convergence, whether it converges or not, starting at uh, 1 or 2 or 5 doesn't really matter. It's the behavior as you approach infinity that's going to dominate every, everything. Okay, so. You can rationalize it that way, and then you could say that since, uh, since p is greater than 1, and this is a p-series, and it converges. The series converges, okay? All right, let's go on and do the next problem. Let's say you have the sum from n is equal to 5, again, to infinity, of 1 over n minus 4 squared. So these are the uh, elements of a series that I'm adding up, 1 over n minus 4 squared. I'm starting at n is equal to 5, okay, uh, but uh, I'm going up to infinity, and I'm trying to figure out if this thing converges or not. So it doesn't really look like a p-series, okay? I mean, this certainly doesn't really look like a p-series. It doesn't look like 1 over n to the p. I mean, you have this minus 4 in here. It doesn't really look like a geometric series either, if you go back to what the geometric series looks like. Okay, uh, so you might think, well, I can't use either of those. Well, we can go ahead and use our, our uh, integral test that we talked about. Okay, we can do that. So what we're going to do to find out if this thing converges is we're going to pretend that this is an actual integral, right? And we're going to say, okay, well, what is the integral from 5 to infinity of 1 over x minus 4 squared dx? That would be the equivalent integral. The, the theorem says, pretend the elements form a function, so we just replace n with x, and integrate this sucker uh, there. Now, if you look back, you'll see that the integral uh, test talks about going from 1 to infinity. Uh, uh, and this, this series starts at 5 to infinity. Well, the, the same rationale as before, 
it, it would matter if you were trying to calculate the actual sum, but when you're actually just trying to check for convergence or not, the limit, the lower limit right here really doesn't matter. Doing an integral from 5 to infinity, if it converges, tells you the same information than if you had started from 1 to infinity, because that difference between 1 and 5 is just a constant. So it, it's really not going to, uh, that part's not going to make it diverge or not. It's the, it's the behavior as you approach infinity that's going to matter. So if you see something like this and you're trying to wonder if you can apply the integral test because there's no, it doesn't start from n is equal to 1, the answer is you can use the integral test uh, from some arbitrary number, but it does have to go off to infinity. So let us solve this integral and see if it converges or not. Well, this is going to be solved by substitution, and we're going to say u is equal to x minus 4, uh, which is the bottom here. And we're going to do that because we want a polynomial down there. It's easy to integrate. So we'll say du dx is equal to 1, integral of the right-hand side, and so then du is equal to dx, okay? So let's go ahead and plug it in. Continuing on over here, you'll have integral from 5 to infinity, 1 over u squared, because u is equal to x minus 4, times dx, but we said dx was equal to du. Okay, so look, you have, have a nice simple integral here. I always like to write these integrals when I have 1 over something raised to a power, as a negative exponent because it just helps me when I apply my, my exponent rule. 1 over u uh, uh, squared is equal to uh, u to the negative uh, 2 power. Okay, So this is going to be equal to uh, 1 over exponent plus 1, which is negative 1, times u to the exponent plus 1, evaluated from 5 to infinity. Okay, Now obviously my limits here are in terms of of, of x and not in terms of u, so I'm going to need to plug in here. So what I'm going to have is negative uh, 1 over u evaluated from 5 to infinity, just pulling this downstairs and keeping the negative sign. And obviously u was equal to x minus 4, so it's negative uh, x minus 4 on the bottom, evaluated from 5 to infinity. Okay? Evaluated from 5 to infinity. So what would this be if I were going to evaluate uh, this guy here? I would say, well, I'm going to evaluate over at infinity. I've got negative 1 over, what is infinity minus 4? Let me ask you that. What's infinity minus 4? It's still going to be infinity. So I'm going to put that down there. Minus, uh, because I'm going to evaluate down here, minus, don't forget I have a negative, so it's minus a negative 1 over, plugging in 5, 5 minus 4. So it's 5 minus 4 over here. Right? Just make sure and keep track of your negatives. This comes from, from the theorem of, of calculus, that you evaluate the upper limit minus the lower limit, and this negative just is because the thing we're evaluating is negative. So what I'm going to have is negative 1 over infinity plus 1 over 1, which is 1. Okay? So this is going to be 0, 0 plus 1, which is 1. So the thing converges to 1. So what does that tell you? The integral, the corresponding integral that corresponds to the series did converge. So that means that by definition, the series converges. This number, 1, has nothing to do with what the series converges to. It doesn't tell us that the series actually adds up to 1. It just says that by looking at the corresponding integral and that integral converging, the series converges. That's all it tells us.